morning. This is Mr. Willie in West Virginia. It is uh, February the 6th. It's a Tuesday. Uh, I got a really odd word. I, I'm not even sure where God's going with this word, okay? But I woke up this morning thinking about the Pledge of Allegiance. You know, as children, we were taught to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're taught to say we're taught to say that as young children. We are pretty much brainwashed into saying it without really understanding what it means. Uh, most of us here in America know that we have a constitution, and that constitution is a written set of fundamental principles by which the United States is governed. It was drawn up in 1776, it was ratified in 1788, and it was put into effect in 1789. So it took like two years to put it into effect. It also has amendments. Uh, there's 27, and the first 10 are known as the Bill of Rights. I would dare say that most of us here in America that are Americans don't know what the Constitution says and probably don't know what the amendments are, except for the ones that we want to know. You know, like, hey, it's okay to bear arms. It's funny how we pick and choose what it is we want to know from whatever we're giving, given to as far as how to run our lives. Same thing goes with the Bible. I would dare say that most Christians, if you were to sit them down and say, hey, could you give us the Ten Commandments off the top of your head? Most people don't know them. And it's, it's sad because God even made it simple and said, there's a way to make it simple. OK, you want you want to know what the Ten Commandments are. You want to know how to live correctly with for God by going according to his commandments. Jesus put it into two simple little rules. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That fulfills the law of the commandments. Pretty much, you know, looking at the Constitution or looking at the, what we say as far as the Pledge of Allegiance, and I think, you know, we, we failed as a nation as far as doing the things that our forefathers wanted us to do. Heck, we can't even get separation of church and state right. It was never set up so that the government can tell the church what to do. It was set up so that the government couldn't intervene on and tell people how to worship God. That's why it was set up. It's a very simple thing. But we've turned this thing into something to where the government has control of things that they shouldn't. All you people that think there's a separation of church and state, it's, a, it's one big illusion. Because the truth of the matter is there's not a pastor that's licensed in this country that isn't licensed through the state. No separation there. Did you know that you, you can't be married, buried, without the state? And it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. There, there, there's a separation of, ch of church and state only when the state wants there to be a separation. They tell you you can't pray in school. Pray it every day. You know what? It can't stop me from praying to the supreme being, to the being who gave me the right to, to live here in America. And, and I think to some degree it's really funny, but we, we say we're a United States. I was thinking this morning as I got up, I said, we're not the United States. We're the divided states. We're only joined by a line on a map that says that we're all joined. But the truth of the matter is that, you know, I live in West Virginia. You know what? Probably most West Virginians don't like all the states around them. I'm from New York, and I know New Yorkers didn't like people from New Jersey. I mean, you know, we're a country that is really quite divided, and we use every means possible to divide ourselves. You know, it's almost it's, it's almost ridiculous. We we use the color of our skin, our national origin, what religion we are, what school we go to, what city we're from. I, there's a city close to here that actually has an east side and a west side, and they're divided. I mean, there there is a need for division in some instances. There are some people that get married that need to be divided. They need to be divorced because they're they're going to kill each other. You know, there are there are some people that don't need to be around each. You know what? I I have a lot of friends that are that are that are what people down here call rednecks. You know what? A lot of you people would probably think you're crazy, but no, I'm not. I'm not crazy. I'm a guy that came to a state that really didn't really want me here. I mean, when I first moved here, a lot of people said, well, how long are you staying here, boy? 
well, you know, I ended up making a life here and I love it here. And you know what? People are a way more honest here because they either like you or they don't. And you know it right off the bat if they don't like you. And then you just, you know what? You have a choice either to try and pray for them and win them to the Lord and win them to your, into your love or, you know what? Stay away from them. I mean, I look at our country and I think, you know, we win a football game and the city wins a football game and they tear the city up. What kind of sense is that? You know, I look at the fact that all around us we've got all kinds of dysfunction. And, you know, as a country, I think we love our dysfunction. I think we love our cancers and our and our ADHD and, and all the things that we can use to draw attention to ourselves. You know, we all have stuff going wrong in our lives. And, you know, I could, I could sit here and tell you all the things that have gone wrong and it would probably just make your hearts break to see the things that I went through. But you know what? Whenever anything has gone wrong, whenever someone didn't like me, whenever someone treated me incorrectly, and this is after I came into the Lord, when I found out that I had a Father in Heaven that loved me and that wanted me to share His love with people, I found a way to get into people's hearts by just loving them. You know what? Jesus didn't get treated like a great guy. I mean, you know, one day he comes in on a, on a horse on a, on a donkey to a parade and three or four days later they're crucifying him life is not perfect here on any place on the planet that's life here on planet earth it's a fallen a fallen planet it's a fallen we're in a fallen state until we come to know the god who created us and then we rise one of my one of my handles when i do a lot of writing is that i'm i'm i'm, I'm an eagle that's one of my favorite animals is the eagle. I also uh, I love a turtle because, you know, a lot of times I have to pull my head in and just kind of hide from what I see out there. But most of the time I'm an eagle flying high, looking at stuff and trying to figure out how to pray for situations. You know, we have to rise above. The eagle is our, our, our country's main symbol. Why wouldn't we want to be better than what we are instead of walking around in our dysfunction? We have, we have all kinds of ways to help people walk in their dysfunction rather than walk out of their dysfunction here in America. I don't like being dysfunctional. I didn't like being in in in, 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 in situations where I was being treated wrong. I, you know what? I grew up in a city where I was bullied almost every day by people. And you know what? The bullies didn't have a color that I looked at. They were, they were bullies. I didn't... You know what? I... I, I I have been picked on by every kind of person you could possibly be picked on. And you know what? You, you can end up just hating everybody, or you can end up just really praying and forgiving everybody for the way they treated you. And get past it. You know, Paul the Apostle was, was, was one of my favorite Bible characters because he got to a point in his life where he realized, you know what? I do this one thing. I forget the past. And I'm pressing on for the prize. I'm pressing on for what God has for me to do. I'm pressing on. I'm not letting the stuff that I did yesterday or the things that people did to me. You know, this guy was stoned. He was, he was beaten. He was thrown in jail by some of his own people at times. You know what? He said, I, I, I got to put that stuff behind me because I got work to do ahead of me. America, I just want to tell you something. You know, we, we say we're indivisible. We say that we are the United States of America, but we are divided in so many different ways that we invent in our heads and that we let the media tell us that we should do. You know what? Every time they go out to film stuff, they film stuff with the idea that this is going to get a reaction from the people that are watching and this is going to, this is going to be great. You know, it's almost like the new bullies are educated people with cameras that know how to bully you into thinking the way they want you to think. Stop watching TV and the news, people, and start getting into your Bibles. You know, I, I, I listened to a guy yesterday say that he, he, he succeeded in life, in business, by doing one simple thing. And, it's, and it was almost so simple, it's stupid. He'd read one proverb a day. For you that don't know it, in the, in the Bible, there's a book called the Book of Proverbs. It was written by Solomon, one of the wisest and most wealthiest men that ever lived on the planet. And he, he did 31 Proverbs, so you can read one a day. Today's the sixth, so you read Proverbs 6. Read that. You do that on a consistent basis. This guy did it for two years, and after that, God began to give him wisdom, and he began to know how to handle different situations. You know, it teaches you relational things. It teaches you how to, how to deal with business. It teaches you how to deal with people. It teaches you how to deal with God. It teaches you how to deal with your own feelings. It teaches you how to do right instead of wrong. 
Who wouldn't want, who wouldn't want to do that? While some of you are getting up every day and reading your newspaper and getting all pissed off and mad because of what's going on in your city or what's going on in your life or what's going on in the United States, you know what? Some of us, and I, I, I'm not the only one doing it, but some of us get up in the morning and we get before God and we read our words and we begin to pray for people and we encourage people through technology and we do whatever we can to, to make us come together. You know, part of the Constitution says that we were trying to perfect a more perfect, we were trying to make a more a perfect union. I don't see that in America right now. And, you know, I, every time I hear people saying, you know, we're going to make America great again. I, I'm 62 years old. I've lived since 1955. I've seen the civil rights movement. I've I've lived through affirmative action. I've, I've seen all kinds of dumb stuff that we do to try and fix things. And you know what? The truth of the matter is that it, I don't see any period of time in America where we were actually great before. How do you be great again? We can be great eventually, but we've got to stop looking at color, looking at religion, stop beating people up because they're from another country. You know, I know there's illegal aliens. You know what? Illegal aliens came into this country and took it from the people that were living here already. Truth. Our history shows us what we've done wrong, and we keep doing it over and over and over again. And I, I get it. Some of you people are mad because these people are coming in and taking your jobs. I know you guys just love picking stuff and 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 working in the kitchens and, and and taking care of other people's children and these guys are coming in and taking your jobs. I get it. And they're and they're all criminals, right? Yeah, right. I'm from New York. I saw criminals. I lived in a town where we had gangsters. I live in a town now where the mafia was big time here in West Virginia. You know, we 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 want to point the finger at at, at Mexican Americans now, or, or and, and I hate the whole hyphen thing. You know, once a person comes here, people are trying to get in America because there's more opportunities, and I get it. I understand why some of you are upset, and I get the whole thing. I'm not trying to start a fight with any of you, but the truth of the matter is, we come to America and then we try and hold on to where we came from. I have never ever said I was an African American. Nobody in my in my genealogy that I have known, none of my relatives that I've grown up with that I've known ever came from Africa. I don't know anybody from Africa. I, I have a couple missionary friends that are in Africa. I got two friends that live in Africa that real are Africans. But as far as you calling me an African American, I don't adhere to it. I'm an American from New York, living in West Virginia now, and I'm you know what? The truth of the matter is, according to Scripture, we all came from one blood. Go back far enough, guys. We all came from Adam and Eve. You guys, the problem with America is that we love to go back to where some of our ancestors came from. Or we like to call that place and get a little pie chart and find out what's, what's the majority of blood that's in us. How do you know they're telling you the truth? You don't know. You're just trusting that they're giving you a... You don't know if some guy's just there with a pie chart going, Well, I think I'm going to put this guy from England. Yep. You don't know. You want the truth? We all came from Adam and Eve, if you go back far enough. We all came from one blood. And, you know, for you believers that believe that God is your father, then, you know what, we're all family. So stop dividing by color. Stop dividing by the fact that he goes to a different church and you go, stop dividing yourselves up from people just because you don't like them, basically. Let's be truthful. Here in America, we think we have the rights to accept some people and not accept some people. One of my favorite Bible scriptures is 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 in in the in the four, in the Gospels, and it's where Jesus meets this woman at the well, and she is a um, Samaritan lady. And you know what? In their Bible times, in times when Jesus was walking the earth, they had prejudice back then. They didn't like the Samaritans because they were supposedly half Jew and half something else, so they were looked down upon. The truth of the matter in America, we love to look down on people and we'll use any excuse we can to look down on one another and it's silly and it, it needs to stop. God said to love him with all your heart and to love your neighbors yourself. Let's get to doing that and see if we can make America great first. Okay? Shalom.